In this video, I want to cover something new we've added with uh, our Instance Analyzer version 2. We call this kind of incorporating assessments into your uh, kind of review-based activities. And so let me show you a couple examples. So uh, we basically packaged a couple content packs that uh, uh, leverage this new assessment thing. So I can use this as some examples here. So first of all, there's a London Readiness uh, uh, kind of use case rule group that you'll see has this flag for use assessments. Um, and what you'll see here also, it has this edit assessment, which I'll show you in a minute when we create a new one, kind of how these get linked together. Uh, but basically, the, the primary way they get linked together is right here, this condition. So it's uh, going against this table of reviews. The rule group contains that rule group, and we're in this uh, kind of new assessment state of compiling assessment data. And so that kind of links the two rule groups, or the rule group with the assessment together. And then the assessment's going to have any number of categories and then what questions you want to ask with those, uh, whether those are uh, questions that uh, provide kind of a you know, one, to, one to five level score and uh, give you, in essence, kind of like a grade on um, something like this case, like a numerical kind of score. Now, another kind of attribute that you'll see on these rule groups, just to highlight what this is, there's this log assessment results. And the way this is leveraged is if you check this, it's basically going to have for any of those categories, uh, let me show you the data here, it might explain it better. Uh, for any of these uh, kind of questions you get back, so it's going to record the category, it's going to record the average score, the max score, that particular question that's being asked, um, and the minimum score, and then ultimately the review that it's associated to as well. And how that can be leveraged, if we go back to, say, that rule group, is in the rules themselves, there's a couple ways that we can analyze the results of those assessments. One is, you'll see there's a rule here going against that assessment metric, which is basically going to say, go to any of those assessment metrics for this review and assign or run this other condition here, which so in this case, any metric that we got back from those various questions that has an average score of less than three, we're going to generate a finding uh, for that uh, as, as something to act upon within our uh, kind of results or finding areas. The other way that we can leverage the assessment information, if we go back to say the London one as an example, is there are inside any of these rules, we can evaluate the results we got back from those assessments. So a simple example here is just kind of in this script here, it's getting the assessment score for uh, this assessment role, results object, and then the kind of attribute or, or uh, name of that object is going to be whatever that category is, right? So in this case, assessments results category dot score returns back the average score for that overall category. So in this case, we can say, hey, if the average score is less than nine, do something with that, right? You also see kind of examples in here where we get a little more granular, and this one requires the, kind of this use of this kind of function where we're saying go get a metric score. So we go get <coughs> this, the average score for a specific question. In this case, in this category, this question called this, and then see if that's uh, value is less than, greater than, or whatever criteria you want to apply to that <coughs> to uh, you know push some sort of finding in here to say uh, we expected a given score from this assessment. All right, so to demonstrate mechanics of this a little more, I think it might make sense to uh, <coughs> create a new rule group and uh, kind of demonstrate how this kind of looks and works. So I'm just going to call this one kind of test assessment. So there's testing one, two, three. All right, we'll hit use assessment, we'll log results so you can kind of see what that looks like. And as soon as I save this, it's going to throw me an error at the top, which is really kind of a prompt of something I need to do. And uh, the reason for this is that we don't want to have an active uh, rule group using assessments that doesn't actually have a correlated uh, assessment metric tied to it. So I can click here to say, let's go create a new one. Right, I'll just call it the same thing. We'll give it a scale factor of 10. All right, some description, same kind of thing. Now, the key binding point, as I kind of mentioned before, is that it's got to match on uh, this table. So we're going to go analyzer review. So I'm going to set the review table. And then the condition, this is where we want to put rule groups contain our new rule group. And we want to specifically state that we're going to trigger this when we're in this compiling assessment data phase. All right, so that kind of assigned that just by doing this, uh, there's actually one other thing we'll have to do with this too to, to, to bind the two together, but basically we're kind of establishing an assessment that's now linked to our 
um, assessment uh, uh, rule group. But so the next thing we really want to do is kind of create some sort of categories, All right? So this will be our kind of say test category. Let's go save. This will be our first question. Let's call this test question one. We'll just use kind of numerical scales here. We'll say they're all mandatory. Let's say favorite number between one and five. All right, just to give a couple questions out here, just so you can kind of see. All right, and we'll go back to our assessments. So the only other thing, so one thing you'll notice if I go back to my rule group, uh, so we go to our rule group, you think, ah, oh, I've got this all set up, right? Everything's good, I got my assessment out there. They say it's still kind of throwing this error. And the reason for that is the other aspect of this is that you'll notice if I go back to this assessment, it's still in kind of a draft state. So it needs to also be published once you're done with the questions. Uh, it's gonna look and see that it is indeed um, uh, published assessment that can be run and sent out to individuals. All right, so now if I go back to my rule group, now it's all happy. Now the other thing I want to highlight here is that a way a lot of our, uh, you'll see kind of in our uh, kind of content packs, the way these are launched um, to say generate a new review for one of these assessments is we have these record producers that do this. Now, uh, the item maturity one's a little unique because it has kind of more of a step through the different categories and recipients to define who you want to send this out to. The London one uh, is a little more reproducible in terms of who do you want to perform this assessment questionnaire. And I want to show you this. And so what you'll notice is there's no, as we created this um, new rule group, there's no uh, record producer that's been published or bubbled up for that record producer or for that rule group. So you kind of have to do that yourself uh, to create. But you could use the London one as an example. So what I would say there is you can go to the rule groups. You can go to see the London rule group. You can say edit record producer. And what you're going to find here is the record producer is pretty simple in terms of asking these questions, but the main thing that I want to highlight with this is that there's a variable set that's already been kind of created for just capturing those assessment users that we want to send the uh, assessment to. Right. So, but in this case, let me uh, show you just if we just create it kind of manually through the uh, kind of native UI here. So I'm going to say all applicable. We'll throw in our test. Assessment. Now, notice I didn't put any rules on our rule on our rule group. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you the mechanisms of asking for assessment information, and then I'll kind of show you how that you know would then kind of flow through and capture and display through the through the uh, review workspace. And the other thing I want to highlight here is if I want to run this assessment one and other rule groups, say I wanted to kind of incorporate, uh, I want to do this assessment one, but I also want to run my best practice analysis rule. Uh, this is not allowed. So as I do run a review, you'll see, you'll say rule groups that use assessments cannot be mixed with them. So basically at this point, I've coded it to where uh, any assessment rule groups kind of have to stand alone by themselves. All right, so I'll have to take that out. Um, and in here, you'll see there's some options for me to define who the assessment individuals are. So I'm just going to choose a couple here. So you can kind of see a couple of results come through. Now the big difference as I go to run a review <clears throat> is that our other rule groups that are not assessment based go straight to generating findings, looking at the rules and uh, uh, basically kind of going to this either work in progress or completed status. When we have assessment based rule groups, there's another step in this process, this compiling assessment data, um, which is in essence gonna go send out these surveys or these assessments to the individuals get those results and then go to the next stage to run the findings. And again, as I mentioned before, the results of those assessments can then be evaluated as part of the findings. So one thing I should be able to see here, if I go to this you know, review workspace, is you'll see I've got kind of two assessments out here. Uh, there's also some options in this interface to either remove individuals or add more assessment users. And that's as long as we're in this current state, I can do that. Notice I'm one of them. So there's an option here to see my assessments, right? Also on my homepage, uh, there's also a My Assessments kind of section here. One little word of note um, is that the assessments that are displayed here are only the ones that are associated with kind of these reviews and, um, and are tied to our EIA application scope. So if you create your own assessments in either the global scope or you have other assessments that are other kind of not tied to these reviews, you won't see them kind of displayed uh, in the review workspace. But so I can kind of take this assessment Right, I can say, give some scores on here. 
All right, as I go in back into this, you'll see this one's now complete. My other one, EIA editor, has not complete. All right, I can go impersonate EIA editor. And I should also mention that uh, these assessments don't have to be done in the review workspace, right? They can also use the native uh, module here to take assessment, kind of fill in the same deals. And then let's go back to me. We will refresh this. And so now this one is review or is, com is basically complete because we didn't have any rules to run. So basically went through and went through the run rules activity and uh, completed that out. All right. So but we do have kind of uh, an overall assessment rating here. We do have kind of question details, average for this, min, max, right? Not all big sample size, but you'll kind of get an uh, assumption here, right, of how this kind of uh, builds that information and then ultimately can use that assessment information to build any findings here. Now just to kind of highlight, right, if we look at one of these, say, ITIL maturity ones, you'll see kind of a little more detail in here in terms of the different questions, right, uh, kind of whether they were below or above a certain threshold, um, kind of maturity information, then you'll see kind of this uh, evaluation of these different rules and findings uh, that we're reacting to those uh, kind of assessments. Also should be mentioned that uh, the PDFs that we generate uh, for assessment-based reviews will include that assessment results kind of summary in here as well um, and any of the kind of score details related to some of those uh, questions and kind of whether they're answered successfully or, or what, what scores were given, high, low, medium, and average. So that covers what I'm going to cover today as far as uh, incorporating assessment-based uh, activities into your reviews uh, where you can ask some various questions and then kind of react to those questions. Uh, in addition to other rules that you may want to, uh, to react on as a way to kind of get uh, other information to drive findings. Hope this was helpful. Thank you.